Once upon a time, there was a young man who looked quite a lot like you. His name was Jeffrey. Young Jeffrey wanted to become an entrepreneur. He wanted the freedom that came from this lifestyle. And so one day, Jeffrey's on his bed, editing a YouTube video on his phone. But he keeps getting distracted. Notifi notification after notification. His attention's getting diverted. Focus is just sapping. Do you think Jeffrey would have produced a high quality video with traits like these? These are not the traits of a successful entrepreneur. But there is a man, the man, who has the right traits. Adonis. Adonis has become a world famous entrepreneur. But before he tells you the tactics that he used, the quick tips and hacks, if there's just one thing Adonis would pass down to his followers, it's character traits. For Adonis knows that traits, character traits aren't as, as popular of a topic, aren't as cool as just simply telling you the top seven ways to make money online. And yet it is your character that will determine your income. Repeat that with me. It is my character that determines my income. And so Adonis helps Jeffrey improve his character as an entrepreneur. Jeffrey's finally focused. He's making high quality videos. He clicks on the upload button. He uploads the most recent video, checks back in a few hours. Perfect. One out of 10 on the YouTube analytics. Fireworks everywhere. Dopamine for Jeffrey. The first milestone of success in his entrepreneurship journey. Now, a few years ago, before I really got on to self-improvement and especially before I, I went all in on YouTube, I remember being in the worst period of my entire life. So I'm talking total degeneracy. 20, 21 years old, smoking weed every single day, like literally wake up, brush my teeth, have a shit whilst fapping i'm not even take like literally like watching porn whilst having a shit in the morning and also i had a girlfriend that i was living with as well by the way that's how down bad i was and straight after that start my morning routine with a pipe i'm not even taking the piss bro that was my entrepreneur CEO morning routine a few years ago, hitting the crack pipe. But there was this one particular day, I'm trying to get more into entrepreneurship. So imagine, okay, this is me from three years ago, four years ago. I'm getting into entrepreneurship. I know that that's the path that I want to take. I don't want to live like everyone else. I don't want a normal job. I went to university and it was probably a mistake. I want the freedom that comes from like building a business. And so I'm in this space of online, you know, like looking for advice, videos like this, how to build a business, drop shipping, copywriting, agency, YouTube, eBay, like flipping, animation, you know, learning skills that maybe someone could eventually pay for, even coding. I'm learning all these different things. And none of them are really sticking. On one day, I'm watching YouTube videos and I get an advert on YouTube by someone that you might know. His name is Iman Gaji. So I'm 21 years old, I'm on YouTube, I hate my life, I'm literally high right now. I've just had a shit fap. And here is this guy who, at the time, I think he was about 19, 
with his advert where he's putting on shoes and he goes like, so I just made, you know, 10 million last year or something. And you know, this is the agency and like, oh, look at me, I've got loads of money and stuff. I looked at him like, you motherfucker, you're lying, you're scamming, you're, you're, you've cheated your way to the top. There's no way that you're younger than me and you've made more money than me. I was filled with resentment and hatred for someone who was doing better than me in the game of, of entrepreneurship and money. Because in my mind, I couldn't even conceive that someone wasn't, like other people weren't broke. So every single time I saw a video of someone talking about how much money they were making, it would just register as like a lie in my own brain because I didn't have the humility to realize people are actually out here making a lot of money just because I wasn't. And you know, if we fast forward a few years from then to around 2021, the YouTube channel starting to take off. I've released my course. I have classes on Skillshare. I remember me and my, my dad took a trip to Portugal. Just like a few days we went. And on that trip, I got an email notification from Skillshare that they had paid me $6,000. It was at that moment where I'm in like the middle of, of like close to the, the pier or the, I don't, I don't know, like we were in Portugal and there was like some beautiful water nearby and the, we were just there next to loads of people in some tourist attraction place. And getting this email there and then that the entire trip essentially had been paid for five or six times with this one email whilst I wasn't even working. I remember seeing it and just thinking like, I think I've, I think I've kind of made it. I remember my father looking at me impressed when I told him as well, because this was kind of a new thing for him. A lot of progress in only a few years. Again, I can tell you the specific tactics, by the way how to build a business, the, the seven side hustles that you need, all these things. I hope you can believe me when I truly think that your character and also your mindset, these are actually the most important things. I am very, very lucky, super lucky that I stumbled upon a YouTube channel where this entrepreneur talked about this and I'm using almost his words when I say this. I watched these videos years ago. I, I still even watch his videos now. His name's Alex Becker. And he made videos where he would literally give out advice. A lot of the videos like that he made, I now like kind of say in my own words now because I learned a lot from him. And he kept on saying that it's like, it's not these tactics. He, he said this one phrase that really hit me and I'll say it to you now. I could come to your house and build the business for you. I could get it running. I could hire the team for you. I could get it profitable. I'll get it up to 10K a month. And I guarantee that the moment I leave and you're in charge of the business that I've built for you, it'll crash. It'll crash and burn and it'll lose all of its profits. You've got a massive fucking ego, so you don't think that's the case. You think that if I left you with this successful business, that you would be fine. Like, if, for example, I literally made you do step by step exactly what it took to get to 10,000 subscribers. You've got this perception that you could probably carry it on from there, don't you? You wouldn't. If I helped you get to 10,000 subscribers, you would literally max out at like 10.4K and it would just kind of plateau after that. Because it's not the tactics, it's not like the real world work that needs to be done. For most people, like, you know, 90 something percent of guys haven't even made any progress in their business yet, even though they want to. For those guys, it's not the tactic, it's not the business model, it's literally just, honestly, if you want the total honesty, this is going to hurt and I'm sure like a one or two guys will click off the video because they get offended. It's because you're a piece of shit. It's because you work like an idiot. It's because you still have notifications enabled on your phone. It's because you work for a few minutes without getting distracted. It's because you have the wrong beliefs and you genuinely think that you can't even sell like a product for a decent amount of price because, oh, but people won't buy it because it's too expensive. Like one guy in Adonis school just said this, like, oh, but I live in Romania and like, I can't charge that much because, and I was like, bro, you're going to stay broke if this is your mindset. I can't charge as much as everyone else because of this. 
Here's you literally arguing against your own success. That this is the reason why most young guys are struggling. I'm telling you right now, it is the traits and mindsets. It is not like the specific tactic. It's not that, oh, you just haven't found the, the right business model yet. It's not that you haven't bought the right course or you, oh, I have not joined Adonis. It's not even that. It's literally just that you think like an idiot. You have beliefs that are wrong. And I sound like an asshole saying this, bro. I'm the only one who's on your side here. I'm literally saying the words that are encouraging you to, to get onto the right track. Your own brain will disagree with me and say, no, 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 no. We just can't do it because of this other reason. I'm telling you, you, you can. You just need to think the right things. Your own brain is literally keeping you handicapped. So let's begin with the first traits, which is first of all, having the right opportunity, choosing the right business. This is, this is a trait that a lot of people get wrong. They just simply go to the fastest thing that can make them money. You probably can see this either in yourself or maybe in family members or friends. There's a guy who doesn't care what he does. He just tries to make money as fast as possible. That guy usually stays broke even though he acts rich, doesn't he? So there's a quote that I like. I'm pretty sure I made this quote unless someone else has said it, but here it is. Choose the late, fuck, choose, choose the lake, choose the boat, then row as hard as possible. Do you understand what that means? Choose the lake, choose the boat, then row as hard as possible. Choose the lake is kind of like the, the market, who you could help. The boat is kind of like the vehicle to your wealth and then row as hard as possible is kind of like, okay, now work hard. Because if you try to work hard on the wrong lake in the wrong boat, then there's no point. You're in the wrong like category. You're swimming in the wrong direction. You only want to work hard when you've actually got the right thing set up. The issue is, especially for a lot of brown people, they'll get a shit business model, shit like, like you know, vehicle. Like for example, just like making their own corner store or Uber or some things. And every, everyone can act like little bitches. Oh, but Hamza, these people are really like, yeah, sure, sure. But they probably have got higher ambitions than that. So we need to call them out because I'm almost speaking to like myself here. If you choose a shit business model to begin with if you choose like a shit vehicle to wealth like the fastest one that comes out because you've got this poor trait of of impatience and, and low standards then suddenly if you're just working hard you're working hard on the wrong thing you're working hard on, on something that genuinely will max out at about 70 80 dollars a day that's it now for some people that sure you can say that, oh, but that's still really nice. But the truth is, we're not here to make $70 a day. Even the guy making $70 a day who's providing for his family and it seems so wholesome. If you asked him, you know, all these like fucking cretins online will defend like that type of person saying, oh, but he's being, you know, he's really providing. But if we asked him, he would say, no, 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 please teach me how to make more money. So we need to speak like this and almost have this kind of demeaning attitude for us not achieving our greater ambitions. We need to speak like men. If you go and see the bitches who comment underneath my community post when I call guys out for being weak and all of them like, oh, but guys, you don't have to work so hard. I'm like, oh, who, how the fuck did you stumble upon my channel telling other guys you don't have to work so hard? Rat? Fucking, no, what's, what's the term? Crab? Crab, you know, crab in the bucket? If there's a guy telling you you don't have to work so hard, that your ambitions don't need to be so high, that you know, you're, you're, you're doing really well when you're not achieving your highest goals. If there's a guy who's saying that to you, slap him in his fucking face and never speak to him again because he hates you and he would happily fuck your future wife when you slow down. That's the kind, if there's a guy who's telling you, oh no, no, it's okay, you don't have to push yourself so much. Hamza's being toxic. He's like, you know, he's just being a bit too extreme. Think to yourself that this is the type of guy who would genuinely try to fuck your future wife because like when you slow down a bit and you've got an extra 10 pounds, you know, from like the compounding result of like following his advice of being a bit easy on yourself. When there's a guy who's genuinely telling you, you can do better, you can achieve more, you need to work harder. Do you not see who's on your side here? And still the amount of people, like these few cretins who will comment, who will disagree with this type of message and tell other guys, oh, but guys, remember Hamza's a bit extreme. You can still keep playing video games. You know, you don't have to be that extreme. That's literally the kind of guy who eventually will just tell you like, oh, bro, yeah, it was, it was just a mistake, man. I, I, I tried to like, you know, I, I, I messaged your, your wife a picture of my dick because I thought, you know, she was, that's the type of guy 
I know this is a side tangent, but you should, it would serve you really well if you look out for the men who are only like utterly telling you to just level up. Utterly just that's what their message is, that they are telling you that you should expect more from yourself. If you visualize the race of men, we're all in this like 800 meter race. This is the race. All of the like the things that you want in life, the rewards of life, women, sex, money, the car, status, everything. It's at the end of this race and you get an equivalent amount de like determined by your position in the race. Not even an equivalent amount, sorry, because results in this race, like the rewards of life kind of compound to the winner. You know, number one gets 90% of the bounty or 95% of like the rewards. And number two gets like 4% and the rest is distributed amongst like essentially the losers, even though they're not seen as losers in the modern day because we're all so weak and liberal. In this race of men, any guy who's telling you that it's okay to run slower is trying to actually get to the finish line before you. He's running side by side to you and saying, oh bro, you know, you know, playing one hour of video games is fine. Hamza's just being extreme, bro. Playing one hour, why, why don't you just sit here? Just, just play one hour, bro. It's not that bad. Why do you think he's saying that? Because he's hoping that you're stupid enough to kind of slow down and think, oh yeah, you know, I can take a bit of a rest. He's hoping that your brain's so weak that you'll listen to someone without actually validating them. And then you'll slow down and you'll be behind him. And there was your future wife at the finish line. You had to be of this certain level, this certain trait of success, of attractiveness, personality, to attract that woman that would have been like good for you, that you would have had children with. And the guy who's telling you that it's okay to watch anime and play video games, he's in front of you now. The guy who's telling you that, oh, but Hamza's advice, Andrew Tate's advice, Brian Johnson, Alex Hamosi, you know, these rich guys and these successful guys who are telling you like advice on how to level up and they're telling you somewhat extreme things compared to the Jeffries of the world. There's other guys who are telling you that this is too extreme, that you should take it easy. Those guys genuinely, this isn't even an exaggeration. Those are the kind of men who will genuinely try to fuck your future wife. This is not an exaggeration. In a weird way, the asshole who's shouting at you and telling you that you're a pussy is more of a friend than the guy who's telling you like, oh, come on, bro, it's only a few drinks. Like, why are you on self-improvement so much? And you know this, right? You know this. But literally, I don't even look at comments anymore. I have all of them disabled. I have literally like seven, eight YouTube extensions. So literally my YouTube is, is wiped clean. I can't see thumbnails. I can't see views, subscribers, comments, everything. Because I don't want idiots to be able to influence me. And in general, only like low tier people comment. No offense, if you're someone who comments all the time, sweet. But the, th the truth is only like stupid low tier people consistently comment rich people successful people don't comment and so i don't want to be influenced by seeing that shit but i i get told every like every now and then someone will message me or, or someone has, has posted it where i saw it saying like the people who comment underneath my videos there's a lot of brain dead motherfuckers so you need to watch out even on this is a strange thing to say even on my channel, even on a self-improvement channel, be careful of the comments underneath it because some people literally, like there's a few people who don't even watch the videos properly, who literally aren't even on self-improvement. They'll go and comment underneath trying to get you to slow down in this race. Think about how malicious that is. These guys literally aren't even on self-improvement. They, they don't even like work hard or, or, you know, watch my videos or even like me. And they'll come to every single video disagreeing with my message and telling you to slow down either one because they're maliciously trying to fuck your future wife or two because they're actually at the back of this race and like they're like this fucking you know like the soft type of person saying hey, yeah everyone this race is just stupid guys like he's at the back saying oh yeah this race is just stupid everyone should you know the hamza's got everyone racing hard man everyone should just slow down why do you think he's saying that because he's way at the back are any of the winners, bro? Imagine any winner that you've ever looked up to. It's some athlete, LeBron James, any winner, any rich guy. Have they been telling anyone to slow down? Has any winner ever told you to slow down in this race before? So when someone, you need to like, this is something you need to keep in mind. Anyone who ever tells you to slow down in working hard and achieving more and having ambitions and working on your purpose and mission, anyone who ever speaks in the tone that you should take it easy is either one, maliciously trying to hurt you and trying to take what was supposed to be yours, or two, he's far behind you, worried about his future position. 
When there's a guy who's literally spilling his secrets to you and telling you how to level up faster, you know that that guy, quite frankly, is such a winner that he's not even that scared of the competition. Think about how much comp like competition I've bred for women, money, YouTube, everything with the, the things that I've taught here. Because I've taught hundreds of thousands, millions of guys how to build muscle how to improve your mental health, how to attract girls and text girls and hold eye contact with them. These are competitive things I'm teaching you because this, I sound like, you know, a bit of a boastful person. This is what winners do. I heard a story of either like LeBron James or one of these guys, Michael Jordan, where they would literally end up teaching like people, like other players on the enemy team, some tips every now and then they'd practice together. You might have seen this in like some guys in UFC, that, like they probably end up fighting each other eventually. And yet they'll literally practice with each other. That's what winners will do a winner who's literally going to compete with you will literally still tell like give you advice on how to be better a loser who's far behind you will tell you to slow down because either one you're making him feel insecure or two he's actually kind of like hoping that more guys slow down so that he can like take what was going to be yours apologies for the rant i just needed to say this i have a full video somewhere on my channel which is about like stop letting other men fuck your future wife something like that you might want to watch that if you're interested in this this conversation so i, I told you about that quote choose the lake choose the boat then row as hard as possible how should you choose the right lake and boat i actually learned a fantastic tip from the first book I ever read, like the first self-improvement book. The book was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. And he said something very interesting. He said, don't think about the benefits of the thing that you want. Think about the problems of the thing and ask yourself, would you actually like to solve them? What this means is right now you're trying to figure out, okay, which path should I take? It's hard to answer this question because when you think of the paths that you're thinking of, like being a YouTuber, agency, maybe this one career, this thing, this thing, this thing, that why it's so hard is because you are probably, be honest, you're probably only thinking about the positives of each one, aren't you? You're probably thinking, okay, YouTuber, I'd make money and I'd get a level of clout. Agency, I'd make money and I'd get a level of clout. Copywriting, I'd make, like, the positives, the benefits of these things, they're quite similar. And so it's too hard to really like make the decision on that. The better way to do it, which is so obvious now that I say it is, don't think about the positives of something because the truth is any business model you choose, if you work super hard and you become super successful, like one of the top guys in that niche, you'll end up making a fuck ton of money. The more important thing to do is choosing the one that you actually could stick to long-term. And the way you do this is by asking yourself, what are the problems that you want to solve? So straight away, when I saw this in this book, straight away, you know, I'm, I'm here doing copywriting, drop shipping, eBay, flipping, becoming a rapper. Literally, I was genuinely practicing to become a rapper. I'm not even good or anything. I was literally just, you know, I, I have this growth mindset where I genuinely believe I can do anything. I could genuinely become like an astronaut if I wanted to put the time into it. I know some guys would disagree because they've got a fixed mindset. I have a very good growth mindset. I genuinely believe that I can do anything. I just have to like literally sacrifice all of my life and to like do that thing. I can create the success. It's just that it's very difficult for a lot of things, right? This was my mindset. So I thought with, with rapping, it's like if I practice it for eight hours a day and keep learning, I will get to the point where I'm like a somewhat of a successful rapper, never to the, you know, the matching the people who have got the genetic talent and also the hard work. Okay, fair enough. But to the good point, right? That was always my line of thinking. So even though it sounds kind of cringe of me saying that I'd be a rapper, it kind of makes sense when you have a growth mindset and you don't have like a small dick, when you've got this kind of personality where you believe that, yeah, like if I worked hard enough, I could achieve whatever I wanted. At that point, it was so like, you know, it was... I was here trying all these different business models and just so clueless to what to take. But then I, I read this book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And I asked myself, okay, what problems would I actually want to solve? Straight away, I crossed out 
um, coding because I was coding at the time and, and maybe this is an unfair stereotype, but I just imagined what coders look like with like shitty posture, addicted to coffee, little squeam, it's like skinny dweebs. And uh, that's just like offensive. I'm sure like, you know, it's an actual like great business model and it, it is part of the future and everything. It's just not my personality. And so I thought to myself, you know what? I, that's not the problem I want to solve. Then how about like rapping? Do I want to solve the, the, the problem of like trying to be lyrical and stuff? Not really. Straight away, what came to my mind specifically, I'm going to tell you the exact thing. I thought about YouTube and I thought about the problems that would arise from YouTube. Two things came to mind. One was like people's perceptions of me and comments. And two was technical things. I specifically visualized having problems with like my editing software. Obviously, this was back a while ago when like I would edit my own videos and everything. And I, th I saw the editing software crashing or whatever it was. And, you know, that's a problem of being a YouTuber. It's like some weird technical annoyance. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'd actually happily solve that kind of problem. And the one with like, you know, comments and stuff of people being trolls. That's a problem that I, I think I can manage fairly well. That's what got me to choose the right business model for me, which was YouTube. It was literally, I did this practice once and I like, we have proof that I chose the right business because here I am today. So this is like the actionable step for you. Make sure you do this right now. And you can answer this as a question, either journal it, write it on Notion. You can even comment it below. I'm not gonna read the comments because it's just stupid. Any, uh, this is a quick side point, but any YouTuber who tells you that he reads all the comments or that even more manipulative, that he loves all you guys, he's a fucking liar. Uh, answer this question. What work would you do for free for 10 years? If you wanna find out the business model that you should actually do, ask yourself that question. What work would you do for free for 10 years? What work would genuinely bring you some kind of joy that you'd do it for free for a few hours every single day? The answer might not come out to you straight away. What I might ask another question is, what, what have you done which is somewhat like work but you've just done it for fun recently. So for example, you could be a guy who's really into fitness and when you meet a guy who wants, you know, he's got some fitness goal, but he's not really sure how to do it. You end up coaching him. You end up giving him advice. So maybe you could become some kind of health coach, fitness coach, personal trainer. It's a good question to ask. <clears throat> if you want, I, so I wrote a book just trying to decide which business model to go in. So this was literally, I wrote this book in 2019. It's only like a short book, it's like 30 pages. In 2019, I wrote this almost like a guide on how to actually start your first business, especially if you're currently studying or working a shit job that you hate. I wrote this guide before I had even done this myself, almost like, you know, I was writing myself the, the guide to follow. I ended up following the guide exactly how I wrote it. And it genuinely, it really did work. And that is the reason why I'm here today. It's a 30 page guide. You can have it. It's the top link in the description. I won't say you can have it for free because you need to enter your email address in there. And when you do give me your email, I'm going to spam you with a lot of stuff. I'm obviously not going to spam you, but like I send out an email every now and then when I've got some kind of announcements. It's, I have like a product where I help entrepreneurs. So you might be interested in that. And then this book is, you can just go get it right now. It's the top link in the description. The second trait of entrepreneurs who create a good level of success is accountability. I made my first ever habit tracker around that same period that we're talking about when I started to become an entrepreneur in 2019, early 2020, I made my first ever habit tracker. I had a couple of basic self-improvement habits, meditation and gratitude. And then I also had a couple of habits in terms of working. I think I literally just had the block for like work, for example. I made this habit tracker. I'm going to stick to it. This is, you know, this is the new me. I'm on self-improvement now. It's all going to be good. I smoke weed, ate sugar. Those were part of my habits as well, actually. And I come back the next day. Here's the habits that I'm supposed to hold myself accountable to. For the box of didn't smoke weed, I tick it anyway. For the box of no sugar, I ticked it anyway. I came to my own habit tracker and lied in there. 
I felt like a little bit of shame whilst I did it. And I can't even logically explain to you why I would have done that. It's just that there is a fear and a pain to hold yourself accountable. Now, if you can relate to that, maybe you haven't done the exact same thing, but you can relate to this, you know, this feeling of almost wanting to forget the time that you failed. That's actually a really bad thing. You want to know from what I've learned about myself, but also from other like high level guys like Iman, Chris Williamson, Ali Abdal, you know, some guys that I've been able to network with when they experience some kind of failure, they actually like hold themselves accountable to feel it and to be introspective about it. What I've found from broke people, from like low tier people, when they mess up, they quickly hide it from their consciousness. So imagine the fat piece of shit eats the, the breaks his diet, eats some junk food and then pretty much forgets it straight away. And so he doesn't feel totally like, like introspective about it. But the, the intelligent guy, when he eats something he's not supposed to, he could go to an extreme level and literally start journaling. Why did I eat that? Imagine that level of accountability. You mess up on your goals and you literally open up your journal and ask yourself, why did I do that? Have you, have you ever tried this before? The next time you mess up on your goals, the next time you mess up on the habits, literally open up your journal and just ask yourself the question, why did I do that? It will feel a little bit painful to admit it, especially if it's a sensitive topic, like it's watching porn, for example. But if you asked yourself the question, why did I just relapse even though I didn't want to? Instead of you just saying like, oh, well, you know, it's day zero and you know, I'll st try, still try and get to day 90. If you really hold yourself accountable and say, I failed my goal yesterday, why? I think you'll be a lot less likely to fail the goal again. Making habit trackers, putting them up on your wall is a fantastic way to hold yourself accountable. In fact, the way that I hold myself accountable, like you, you can't see too much. This is just like pages from a calendar just to kind of like remind me of where we are in the year. But a lot of my wallpapers here, I'll show you very quickly because I've, I've never really shown them before. See that? So I've got them all. Maybe one day I'll, I'll walk you through exactly what I've got up there. But a lot of my papers on there hold me accountable to my goals, to my habits. And I think accountability is a very important part because I didn't make any real progress to being an entrepreneur up until the moment when I actually came back. The first time I did this, I came back to that same habit tracker after I, I had, you know, smoked or ate junk food, whatever it was. And I saw that box that I really wanted to tick because I didn't want to hold, you know, the truth to my failure. And I didn't tick it. And there's a pain associated with that. But that pain truly leads to growth. Because once you start to fill out this habit tracker in truth and honesty, and you see the days that you've missed, you start to realize like, oh shit, you know, like it, 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 it plays more on your mind and you start to actually work harder on it. Another thing, for example, another thing that you might do, let's say you start the habit tracker or the goal and you end up messing up a bit and you almost destroy the thought of that goal in itself. So for example, a fat guy could start the diet, mess up on the first day and kind of delude himself to thinking he wasn't even on a diet for the next few days. Or you could start the habit tracker or the goal, not do the work that you were supposed to do, and then just abandon the habit tracker and just not look at it again, just because it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go make a new one soon. If you've done stuff like that, trust me, I have too. The way to, to overcome this and hold yourself accountable, to force yourself to just fill out in truth the system that you're using to hold yourself accountable. You can have an accountability partner. You can have a habit tracker. If you're completely by yourself and you need something like free and easy to use, a habit tracker is awesome. And for this actionable step, I've actually made one for you. Like I've made a template that you can literally just click and download for totally for free. You don't even give me your email for this. I'll link it below. And uh, it's on Notion, so just click on the duplicate button in the top right, and then there's like a gray button that you can add more habits to. So I made that just for this video, just so like you, it's easy for you to make your own habit tracker. The, the book Atomic Habits by James Clear does talk about establishing clear habits and making small progressive improvements. So this is exactly what I do to use the advice from the book Atomic Habits with your habit tracker. Be totally honest, don't check off the boxes that you didn't do. Like, don't lie to yourself when you miss the day or something. And just see the entire month starts to fill out. And when a few weeks have went by or an entire month, 
look to yourself and, and really just kind of calculate, okay, you know, I missed 17 days of meditation this month. You know what would be an awesome goal for next month? To miss 14 days. Who's ever spoke to you in that way before? Because most guys, they, they hold themselves to too high of a standard in a certain way. For example, you wouldn't go into the gym and just try and lift two plates like bench press on your first day at the gym, right? You'd level it up. But when it comes to self-improvement habits, a lot of people don't follow the same mindset. They think to themselves that they're not gonna, like they're on NoFap every day of the month for every month for the rest of their lives. NoFap's like a really popular one where people have a stupid mindset. People genuinely like get onto NoFap and they just assume that, like if you imagine NoFap as a, as a habit tracker, they assume that every single day is gonna be checked off, but that's totally unreasonable because that's like coming into the gym and deadlifting three plates to begin with. You can't do that. You've gotta start off leveling it up, right? So on the, let, let's say you had a habit tracker for NoFap, for example, or reading or deep work for your business. The first month could literally just be like your goal could just be checking it off for five days for the month, which I know sounds quite small, but if you increase that by five each month, before the end of the year, you'd have a full complete month of absolutely zero days lost and you've progressively overloaded to it. The guy who sets the goal to just check it off every single day never makes like good progress until he changes his mindset. He just constantly gets to like day two, day three, messes up. And then to him, it's like, that's actually really bad because he couldn't mess up. He couldn't miss an entire day this month for his goal. If you told yourself that you could miss 25 days this month, but still hit your goal as a beginner, and you end up, for example, checking off 10 days because you know that's still relatively reasonable. Suddenly you just doubled your goal. You feel awesome, right? Because your goal was like to check off five days. You've checked off 10. You feel awesome. So not only do you need to hold yourself accountable, but you also just need to have somewhat realistic beginnings. This is not me, you know, trying to tell you to slow down in the race or anything. This is, for example, if me and you were racing in that analogy I used before, this is me seeing you sprint, but kind of like smash your heels on the floor with poor form. And I can tell that you're going to like run out of energy very soon. So this is me telling you, bro, 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 bro we're going to sprint soon, but just pace yourself for now and fix your running form as well, because we've still got a large amount of running to do. Pace yourself for a little bit first. Let's like improve your form and stuff. Let's teach you some things. And then there's going to be a good time to, to sprint. And I will do that alongside you. The third trait of entrepreneurs making 10K a month or even more is focus. This is where I think a lot of people, still those on self-improvement like yourself, mess up. I can almost guarantee that your focus is nowhere near the level it could be just simply because you have not followed a couple of quick tips. Focus is honestly all about like the very quick tips that you can just start right here, right now. So remember that YouTuber I told you about the entrepreneur, Alex Becker, he made a video. He's made loads of videos actually on focus and he had mentioned that he focuses really, really well and he works and does more work in one day than most people do in a week. That was like a quote of his that I liked. And when I first heard that, I thought it was like a bit of an exaggeration. He does more work in one day than an entire week. Then I saw the statistics. Most people only actually do about one to two hours of work a day. They're in work for eight hours. So you probably, how many hours are you in school or work or whatever? It's probably like four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10, right? you're still only actually getting like a solid one to two hours of work really done. I know that you'll disagree with that, but it'll, it actually serve you well to just listen to this. You probably are only getting like two hours of work done in eight hours of pretending to like be in the work mode. The reason why is because when you get slightly distracted, like for example, every single time you look away from your computer screen, you've lost 20 minutes of productivity. Honestly, every single time, if you check your phone, you've genuinely lost 20 to 30 minutes of like your brain's focus power. If you get a notification or a call, or if someone speaks to you, you've lost half an hour of, of your focus time. And people get interrupted, like on average, I think it, the statistic was like 20 times an hour. And that's you, you know, opening up the random page just for no reason. That's you like, you know, 
being on the internet for some reason and then just like seeing something that looks kind of nice and you end up clicking on it by accident and you just lose your focus. This is your brain, just, you know, your monkey brain, just mind wandering. And so I started to follow the steps that I'm about to teach you, the quick tips. And there came a time when I woke up and I recorded seven YouTube videos before 12 o'clock. I was uploading daily at the time. Do you see what that means? I woke up, recorded seven videos, all in one day, well actually before midday. And seven videos is a week's worth of work. I did a week's worth of work before 12 p.m. in one day exactly what Alex Becker had said. When on that day, I realized he was not actually exaggerating. There's levels to like your, your work, your focus, not getting distracted. And really the easiest tips, we'll go through them right now. You're probably gonna disagree with some of these I highly recommend that you just realize that if you do have some kind of limiting beliefs in your mind, it's not really you who's saying this, it's more the addictions that have been placed onto you. Because tip number one, put your phone on silence, do not disturb, and maybe even airplane mode as well. This is your actionable step. Go onto your phone and actually go onto the settings, go onto the notifications, disable the notifications, disable them. So these are three things you can do right now. Put your phone on silence. So on iPhones, it's, you know, that, that button that there, boom. Put your phone on do not disturb mode where you scroll down and you press the blue, like little moon button there. And then also go onto the settings Search for notifications, go through the entire list of apps and disable those notifications so that when or if you have to use your phone for work, there's no notifications. You won't get any, like literally if I scroll down, it's only like, like an app that for example, it's just a new app that I haven't actually done this new setting on, but I don't see even when I scroll down, guess what? When I scroll down like this and you see the notifications, I still don't see Instagram notifications. I don't see Twitter. I don't even see messages, WhatsApp or anything. You know why? Because if I'm using my phone, I want to see those things when I specifically clicked on the app for those things, right? Because I can't believe the amount of guys that won't take this tip for whatever reason. It, it, it just comes down to FOMO. These social media companies, these like tech companies have convinced you that if you don't reply fast, that you'll be seen as like this low status guy. It's actually the other way around. When you don't reply fast, you're actually seen as a bit more of like a high status man. But I have genuinely, I, I'm, I'm saddened because my advice must not be good the way that I'm saying it. I've got to take responsibility. I have genuinely, I believe, never seen someone use this advice. I have never seen someone actually have their phone as productive as mine, including like successful guys. And it blows my mind because this is the easiest way for you to just focus. Silent. Do not disturb, disable all the notifications. When you want to see your WhatsApp messages, click on the WhatsApp button, but you should not see them pop up onto screen or be in your notification center when you didn't plan to see them. This is like, it, this is common sense to me. I've done this for literally three years and I promise I would not be here today at this level of success if I had not done this because I get quite frankly, quite easily distracted. Don't fucking bullshit, you do as well. I can't believe that there's still some guys watching who won't do this. I'm sure that pretty much everyone who actually respects themselves is doing this right now because this is your actionable step. If you want this video, but also all of my videos to help you, you've got to take a little bit of action. This is a fast thing that will genuinely change the future of your life and your work. 
put it all on, like do not disturb, silent, disable the notifications. Your phone should literally, I literally have, people with iPhones would know this. If you like rise your phone like this, your screen will come on. If you tap your phone screen in the screen, I've disabled that shit. Like it, I want my phone to be as like manual as possible. I want to see the screen when I literally press this power, like this button once. I don't want to see the screen for any other reason. I don't want to move my phone and straight away the screen comes up and there's a notification, there's a text from someone. That's like literally saying to yourself, I'm an idiot yet take away my focus because it's not that good i don't respect myself fuck that i literally have set these precautions because i respect myself my time and my focus and if you do then you do the same thing now you may have a limiting belief what if, what if someone really needs to call me what about emergencies apple i don't know about brokey um android <laughs> i don't know about like other phones but apple actually has this feature that if someone calls you repetitively it will still go through all of your silences so that's absolutely fine i believe if you've got airplay mode on it won't but you could still have your phone on on silence and do not disturb mode and if someone calls you a few times in a row because it's an emergency then your phone will still light up in three years of doing this we've never had an emergency which obviously like we're lucky for that and stuff but i think I think it would serve you really well. You might have a ton of limiting beliefs right now. In fact, if you do have some limiting beliefs, I do kind of want to know them. I'm not going to read the comments, but like find a way to like let me know. I don't know, email me or something. But it, it would really, really be a good tip for you to implement. Make your phone this place of focus instead of distraction. Because one, when I'm working on my computer or I'm recording, I don't want that shit to go off. Two, when I have to grab my phone for something and I have to go on it for something, I don't want to see something on here which I wasn't planning to go and look at. Do you understand the mindset here? It's like, if I want to go and see my text messages, I want it so that I can only see my text messages when I click on that specific app. I don't want it to pop up when I'm doing something else. You're training yourself to have like ADHD, like some shit attention span. And then you're wondering why you've scrolled down to the comments four times in this video. You're wondering why there's a rise of like TikTok and YouTube shorts. It's, it's because of people like you who refuse to like just take action on this. That's the, the first tip. It's for free and it's literally so quick quick for you to set up and it will genuinely save you so much of your focus. If you have any respect for yourself, like I really think you should do it. <laughs> Another focus tip and probably the second like greatest one, which is so simple. Have a piece of paper just like this. Just a scrappy piece of paper, I'll just tell you, okay? Scrappy piece of paper. And it literally just has the major tasks that you're going to do. And the idea behind it is that you do, like when I've started this task, so this task is record this video. When you start the task that you wrote down, so it's literally just a task li list, right? So I've just got two things on mine. So I, at the top, I write the date. Saturday, 10th of June, that's my birthday, I'm 26. I'm literally recording a video on my birthday because I enjoy this stuff. Saturday, 10th of June, I turn 26 today with a little smiley face, record five traits vid, which I'm doing right now. And then after this, I'm gonna study like this course that I've got, that's it. I'll, I'll probably add more things to this task list, but it's just that simple. The idea is when you start the task on this list, you do nothing but that task till it's completed. So what I mean by this is a really good productivity and focus technique is say to yourself, set the intention that when you start a specific task, like for example, you're gonna go and outreach and DM 100 people for your business, or you're gonna go and script two videos, or you're gonna go and record, or you're gonna do this other thing, this specific task. Set yourself this intention that you're going to start this task till completion without getting distracted, without looking at anything else. It's a bit easier for me with recording because for example, I'm not just gonna pause the recording and just like scroll on my phone for no reason. But with other things like studying and you know, other tasks that I'll write down, the idea is that when I start that task, I literally am committing myself to just do that task and nothing else till that task is completed. This is how you train your focus. Remember, this is for you. I know that this can, you know, the, the two things I've suggested here, this and the phone. These are tips for you to improve your life, your focus and make more money. It can seem a little bit sad or annoying or extreme or that, you know, I'm telling you to not enjoy yourself or anything, bro, by all means, go and have a fun time. But when you're working, work, because you will not only get this work done more efficiently, you know, in less time. So you just save time. So you've got more time for fun afterwards. 
but two, the work that you do like this will be so much better. Imagine where, like how I would have been, imagine my like number of YouTube subscribers, if almost every time I recorded a video, there was a notification that quickly I, I would check halfway through the video, you know, my editor removed it or something. Imagine like how distracted I would have seemed without me even knowing it for like the part of the video for a few minutes after I had just checked my phone probably it would have been like our success probably would have been exponentially less than it is right now right you can see that being reasonable so it's the exact same thing for you these things that i'm saying they're for you they're for your success they're for your life quality even though it seems like you're going to lose like a bit of like kind of relaxation in a way get the work done efficiently and effectively and then just relax after that that is your actionable step one, go and just stop your phone from being a distraction. Put it on silence and keep it on silence. Put it on do not disturb mode and specifically go and disable all the notifications. And if you want, you can disable like the, it's called um, rise to shot rise to wake something like that okay it's, it's the screen thing which means that like when i move my phone like this it doesn't just turn on like the iphones do that i don't know about other phones but literally when you just move them the screen will come on when you tap the screen the screen will come on i only want the screen to come on if i press like the power button so it's it's all manual if you set those things on i guarantee your screen time on your phone will drop by like an hour as well by the way that's your actionable step do that and also start to just write a paper task list this is very nice i literally let me show you mine this is how you know I'm not bullshitting with the advice I give you. These are all of mine. See, so I'll do this literally every single day. This is like what a, um, let me show you like a complete one. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing private in there. Yeah, this is like what a, what a complete day looks like. It doesn't matter what I've got on there. Obviously, we're going to have different tasks, but you can just see kind of like how I structure it. So once I've done like a block of work, I'll just kind of draw a line underneath it. Like, you know, if I'm going to the gym or something and I can kind of start off underneath the line. <clears throat> My throat is getting so dry. This one can be quite quick. So the fourth trait is to prioritize. Most guys will spend time doing work that isn't actually like the most important task that would move the needle, that would, you know, get them the success, but rather they'll spend a lot of time doing low tier tasks. So when I was growing on YouTube, I don't mean to be offensive to this guy, but I'm gonna essentially call out another YouTuber. There was another YouTuber, and I'll just say his first name, his name was Ahmet, and he was in the same space as me. And we, I remember we had about the same subscribers. I, understood this trait of prioritization and so I focused entirely on just being on camera and then getting better at being on camera. They were the two tasks that I was doing in my work. Genuinely, the only work I was doing all week was just being on camera and then being better on, like training to be better on camera because that's my highest leverage as a YouTuber, right? Everything else can be outsourced or everything else can be eliminated because it's not actually high ROI. And this poor guy who was in the same niche as me, who honestly at the time made better videos than me, who was better on camera than me. I saw him making a big mistake, a cringe mistake. He was doing the strategy, which is called comment maxing. It's like this cringe thing where YouTubers will literally just comment like spam, copy and paste quotes onto other videos, hoping that like, you know, a few people click on their channel. He would do this on my channel. He would do this on pretty much every self-improvement video I'd watch. He, this guy would do it. We had the same amount of subscribers. Recently, I just went and checked his YouTube. I've got 2 million subscribers. He's got like 30K. Now, 30K subscribers is still kind of nice and stuff, but okay, sweet. But it's like he had potential to be on hundreds of thousands. He didn't follow this trait. I don't mean to like call him out in like a bad way. This is just me again, like looking at the guy who's in the race and telling him his, you know, you're, you're, you're smacking your foot wrong, bro. Let's like, let's focus on the right thing. You don't want to be the guy who's left behind because you're focused on something else. Let's say in this race, let's say just in a normal race, we, the objective, the priority is just to run to the finish line, right? Would you be in this race and start doing lunges on the way there thinking, oh yeah, yeah, but, but I'll build up some of my quads. No, it's a race, just fucking run as fast as possible, right? That's the priority. 
This is what something that a lot of guys don't get, and I think it comes down to procrastination. You don't do the task that should be the priority because you procrastinate like a little bitch, and you'd rather do the thing that's easier. You'd rather go on ChatGBT and like ask, ask it some bullshit rather than actually just sitting down to record the video. If you're a YouTuber, you want to know my like $10,000 coaching tip that like if you paid me 10K and I was like assessing your life to be a better YouTuber, you not want to know what it is. Stop doing everything apart from recording and training to get better at recording. If you're doing any other task, you will get destroyed in this competition. That's it. Just record videos and train to get better at videos. If you're doing any other task, you're wasting your time and you're going to be a shit businessman. Prioritize the tasks that are absolutely essential that you must do outsource and eliminate everything else. I only record videos and I only train to get better at recording videos. That's it. Stop making your logo. Stop like f wasting time pretending to like network with other people. Collabs don't work in this, in the, in like the modern YouTube space. If you needed me to tell you collabs are low tier, no one gives it. The only collab that will actually like be worth your time is when you collab with a guy who's so much bigger than you that at that point, it's not even a collaboration. It's more like he's literally just giving you subscribers. Apart from that, there's nothing you can do, which is higher leverage than literally just record the video. So for whatever business it is that you're getting into, you need to know what I would call the priority task. You must answer this question. What is your priority task? The way to answer this question with our actionable step is to answer this question, right? If you could only work for two hours a day, what tasks would you do? I got this question from Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Workweek. If you could only work for two hours per day, max, that's it, just two hours, then you literally can't work anymore. What would you do? So as a YouTuber, if I was hearing that, I'd say, okay, record videos and like train to, rec to be better at videos and maybe speak to my team a little bit. Okay, you you've got a couple of priority tasks there. But now let's just, even though it sounds like common sense, let's just really figure out the priority task for you. This is the major question that changed my life. If you could only work for two hours per week, what would you do? Genuinely really imagine that. Literally, you could only work for two hours per week. You'd probably wanna do those two hours like all in one day. Imagine you could literally only work for two hours per week. What task would you do? For me, I would do absolutely nothing apart from just recording the video. That's it, right? Because if you imagine in my perspective from my business, that's the only thing that cannot be outsourced. It can't be eliminated. It's the thing that only I can do. No one else can be on camera. It's way better than me spending time on my fucking email newsletter, like a dweeb, like everyone else spends their time on, right? I'm telling you, bro, all these other tasks that you're doing, they will actually reduce your success. You think, like, so you found out the priority task, which is the answer to this question. For YouTubers, it's recording videos. Now, here's the problem. You have this bullshit mindset where you think that there is a little bit of a benefit if you do the other things, so you may as well do the other things, right? So you're thinking, I'm, I'm it. Unfortunately, I have to use him as, as an example. He's thinking, no, 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 but I get some subscribers from comment maxing, from spamming shit quote comments on other people's YouTube videos. Yeah, sure. You get a couple of subscribers like that. There's a tiny benefit doing that, but by doing that and having your brain in that space and having time invested there, you're actually losing way bigger success because you're not focused on the priority task that any benefit mindset will kill your success. I will say this again, the any benefit. what that means is like, if there's any benefit to doing this thing, a lot of people will do it without asking themselves, what's the most important thing that I could be doing? You need to ask yourself that question 20 times a day, especially if you know you're prone to, to working, you probably won't admit it, but like an idiot, working on these stupid small tasks that might give you some kind of benefit, but they literally are so insignificant compared to just just being better at the main thing. You need to identify your priority task and just invest entirely onto making that better. So as a YouTuber, this would be okay. Record videos consistently, spend time practicing the video that you're about to record, spend time training the skills of influence, persuasion, social skills, storytelling, get coaching for all those skills, get training for all those skills, practice those skills, read books on those skills, instead of fucking updating your logo. 
instead of commenting on another YouTube. Bro, like I said, no one smart comments. No one smart comments on another video. It's so rare that like a big YouTuber who's actually like a smart, intelligent guy will comment. It's like every now and then, you know, when the guy's having a shit, he'll write like a nice comment. You know, like Ali Abdal has wrote like two comments on my page. I've wrote some on his. That's a bit different. It's like, okay, it's so infrequent. But no, like no one smart comment maxes and posts a fucking quote for like another YouTuber's page to try and get three subscribers per quote. I know because I used to do that shit before I made this channel. When I had like a little gaming channel and I would spam, just comment and, and, and like for like and everything. No one smart spends their time like that. You need to identify the priority task and commit yourself fully to just mastering that task and only that task. Your small dick mindset will kill your success because you won't want to focus on that task. Why? Because it's hard. Because it's hard and it's uncomfortable and you have to set things up and it drains your bra your brain power and you'd rather just delude yourself into thinking that you work hard for 10 hours a day when actually you don't have to work that much. You literally just have to focus on the hard thing that you could probably only do for like, you know, how long can I record videos for? Two, three, four hours a day max and then your throat starts hurting and then you don't need to record for an entire week. It's kind of like anti-hustle culture because it's kind of like boring to say like, yeah, I, I only work a few hours a week. Don't waste your time on tasks that aren't even important. This is a, like such a key trait of successful entrepreneurs. The most successful entrepreneurs do this extremely well. This is why I have a lot of respect for Iman. I've seen the way he works. He doesn't waste his time doing bullshit tasks that other people can do. Most of his work tasks, when I stayed at his house and I saw this, most of his work tasks is literally just him going on to calls with his team to kind of be a team leader now because he's got people who are better than him in each individual role of the business. That's what I'm trying transitioning into now. I'm still the one on camera like Iman is, but it's like we've got people who are working for us who are actually becoming more skilled at those micro tasks so that we can just focus on like the main things that only we can do, which is like being a team leader, being on camera. That's the actionable step. Answer the question of if you could only work for two hours for the entire week, what task would you do? Once you've got the answer to that, prioritize that task and not just do that task, but get better at that task. You could spend five hours, 10 hours a day reading about that specific task and learning how to do it better. I have literally just genuinely given you a $100,000 tip right there. You would be a fool not to take that advice. Finally, the last trait of successful entrepreneurs who are making 10K a month or more is courage. Courage is the skill of overcoming your fear. When you feel fear, you can go and do the thing that you're scared of anyway. When you do the thing that you're scared of, that is courage. Courage is not that you don't feel fear. Courage is that you feel fear, but you do that thing anyway. This relates so much to not just entrepreneurship, but masculinity in general. If you open up your copy of The Way of the Superior Man onto chapter... Four and then also chapter eight. Four and eight will tell you about something called edge. What the author calls edge, we can say is fear. You can translate edge to fear. In any given moment, a man's growth is optimized if he leans just beyond his edge, his capacity, his fear. Your growth will be optimized if you lean just beyond your fear. What this means, you can go read those chapters, chapter four and eight of the book, The Way of the Superior Man. What this means is that you will make the most progress in your life if you feel where you feel fear and you use the skill of courage of doing that thing anyway and being okay with like the first few times you do that thing that you're not going to be that good at it naturally because it's the thing that you fear but obviously like as you do the thing that you fear what you fear starts to kind of like get you know bigger or not even bigger we can say like it gets spread out even more so it, in a practical setting in this book where he says edge Edge just means fear. I just want to recap that. A good few months ago, my business wasn't actually doing so good. I was at like an intense level of stress. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I was genuinely like 
depressed and anxious just about six months ago. I had built this business as an entrepreneur and one step after the other, I got to a point when like the business wasn't even profitable. I had made a bunch of stupid business decisions purely based out of fear. The fear stemmed from literally just the comments that I would see on YouTube. I got so influenced by the comments that people would leave underneath my channel, especially the comments I would see on other people's channels, especially when it came to being a businessman and making money. In the modern day, that's not seen as like it's such a good thing. It's like a crazy thing because you're watching this as, as like an entrepreneur and you think it's an awesome thing for like another guy to be an entrepreneur and a businessman for me to be giving you this advice. But in the modern day, like the, the sort of liberal, woke West, um, skinny neck, weak, broke people they hate the idea of entrepreneurship and business and especially like creators becoming entrepreneurs and so every step that i took towards entrepreneurship and making profit in this business every single time there was a couple of comments that was probably literally from like stupid 14 year olds who are currently having a carb crash who watch porn who would comment like oh i see hamza's a, hamza's a businessman he's a scammer those comments would scare me like I would see them and I would feel so much pain from like seeing something like that, that then I literally got like so much fear when it came to thinking about making profit from the business, making a product to sell, that literally we got to the point when my business was genuinely failing. I had almost 2 million subscribers and I literally wasn't even profiting much and I had to literally borrow money from my sister for the business. Imagine that, I'm 2 million subscribers. I'm like this ultra successful guy and everything. I had to borrow money because I was so afraid of making a product that I could sell because it was just, there was fear involved because I just thought, oh, you know, the comments will go proper negative. Turns out that there's like literally like three guys who just comment some bullshit and all the rest of us actually appreciate entrepreneurship. Like you're here because you want to make more money. You're here because you want to achieve financial freedom. Me too. And so you're probably thinking like, you know, if you just evaluate this video, you're probably thinking, okay, I'm just dropped some like nice wisdom here. This is quite a nice video. Imagine when I tell you that I was scared of making videos like this. I was scared of making like a product to sell to like help entrepreneurs because of what a unidentified potentially 14 year old might comment. It sounds stupid, but when you say your fear out loud, it usually does sound stupid. For example, with speaking to a girl, there's a girl that you like over there. You feel the fear and that you don't end up speaking to her. But if you spoke it out loud, I'm scared to go over there because the guy to the side who I've never seen before, who I'd probably never see again, he might look at me from the side of his eyes and that kind of scares me. Imagine if you said that fear out loud, you'd feel like a fool, right? I'm scared to go over there because she might not really be such a nice person and I'm scared of what this 110 pound little girl might, might say to me. I'm scared that she might say that she's got a boyfriend and it might be slightly embarrassing. If you say your fear out loud, you sound like literally such a pussy and you realize that your fear was totally just illogical. And that's exactly what I needed to do. And so when, you know, I literally moved back to my parents' house, even though I had like 2 million subscribers. And it was with a friend named Andrew Kirby. It was when he sent me like a Loom video of him kind of reviewing like the product I was selling. I was kind of like, I had like a couple of these like kind of shitty products that I just wouldn't ever really mention, but I didn't want to make like a big one that I could publicly say to you like, oh yeah, this is the product that I sell and I'm super proud of it. So he was kind of reviewing them and he was saying, oh yeah, you know, they're kind of good and you're making like 20K a month and that's really good and everything. But with your audience, you should be making a lot more, 10 times more. And he had this like enthusiasm for entrepreneurship, which I, it just clicked and I really needed to see that. And suddenly I realized like exactly what the problem was. I just had the belief that I would be like a bad person, that I'd be seen as like this, this horrible businessman if I released a product that helped entrepreneurs, like, you know, like um, sort of newbie entrepreneurs figure out which business model to do and to make them more productive, improve their sleep and everything, essentially helping like use self-improvement productive, like proactively to help an entrepreneur so that he can go and do the work and then also help him with specific businesses like YouTube and everything, right? I thought that I would have been seen as like a bad 
person for doing that. And in some ways I have. There's been a couple of people who will, who will literally comment every now and then say, oh, Hamza is, you know, mentioning an Adonis school and that's like a scam or something. It's like, bro, how is it a scam? You've never bought it. So you've never even been inside. There's 500 and something guys inside of it who literally are like happy to be there. So you can't call it a scam. You can say that it's too expensive for you. And I apologize for that, but it's the price point that I genuinely believe is the right way. You can say it's too expensive for you. You can say that you're not interested. But then when people use like insults, that genuinely kept me in such like a bubble that I didn't want to see those comments. That, I know you. this might be hard to comprehend. The fear of a 14 year old commenting something like that genuinely kept my business at 10 times smaller than it could have been. Because the moment I overcame this fear, starting with Andrew Kirby sending me like a bit of encouragement, enthusiasm, and then he started to help me with ideas and he helped me, he connected me with this other guy called Victor and these guys are really good at business and they helped me make this awesome product that I'm really proud of. Suddenly I'm making 10 times more money, not even exaggerating. Suddenly I'm genuinely making like over 100K per month consistently. And I have like no expenses. I live at home with my parents and I love it here because I literally just get to wake up and just work all day and I fucking love it. Now I've become like the next level of, of like business, of like success, which means that I can teach it to you. Suddenly it's like I've got, I'm, I've got so much more success than now I can teach it. And also that I've got like a nice program that, you know, if you can't afford or something, you might be able to eventually like kind of save up and be able to come in it if it's like the perfect place for you, which I really do. Like I've never spoke so proudly of something that I've sold before this, but I genuinely think the product that I've released because of this, like overcoming the fear, this is half me selling it to you, but really this is like my example, my story of this, you know, the trait of courage that I actually needed more courage in my life because I was so scared. And now when I look at it now and I see that I've made something which I'm really proud of, which the guys who have bought it say that it's awesome. And they've literally been in it for over like a month now. And they're in there every single day talking and saying that they're like happy about it, saying that they like me so much more because they joined and everything. I've done that. I've made a fuck ton of money. I've connected with like a bunch more like businessmen and everything. I've had a fun like work task. It's been purely positive. And when I think about the fact that I didn't do this because I was literally just feeling fear, it blows my mind. And so this is the last big trait that I just want to really help you with. Fear will keep you living this life of, of mediocrity the life of like an average man who's scared to, for example, quit his full-time job and everything. If you're interested, just quickly, the the the, the concept of quitting your full-time job because you want to build a business is exactly what my ebook is about. It's like 30 pages. It's just like the guide that's linked in the description. It's the one I mentioned before. Inside of that, if you're if you're interested in in Adonis School, once you get that ebook, I send you a couple of automated emails after that where I link Adonis School. After like two days or three days, you get no more emails from me. I don't even send like weekly emails or anything. So the idea is like you get the book for free. You get this like entrepreneur guide and everything. You see like two emails or three emails from me for over the next few days. Then after that, you get like no emails from me at all, unless if I manually send one out, because there's something that I want to announce. Maybe the next time I do that will be like for my book that's coming out in a few months or something like that. Right. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so maybe fear is holding you back right now. And so this is a really important time for you to question yourself. What fear are you feeling? which could be holding you back from creating more success when it comes to your business, for example, what is the fear? And so the actionable step for this trait is to do Tim Ferriss's fear setting exercise. Tim Ferriss is the author, the entrepreneur that I mentioned before. He's the one who wrote the four hour work week. You can literally hear how, how um, dry my throat is getting bro. One sec. Oh, my throat lit <laughs> my throat uh, <laughs> my throat usually hurts when i record these like cuz i do this all in one take by the way <clears throat> quick water break and posture break join me bro <laughs> cheers bro <laughs> if you're interested like the reason why i record these long videos all in one take it's just because when I was going through my entrepreneurship journey and there was someone who was at the level of success that I admired, I would wish more than everything that they would just press record on a camera and just speak to it and just tell me things about 
business, money, their mindset and everything. Unedited, no music, no random fucking sound effects and all this stuff, like, you know, distracting. I just wanted like this rich, successful guy that I looked up to, to just keep talking, saying valuable things with no interruptions at all. And I, th I thought to myself, yeah, well, why don't I just do that? I did, I, I wanted to stop uploading, you know, like the quick 10 minute videos where each point is only like one minute long. And you know, it's those videos get a lot more views, by the way, these videos still get a fair amount. And I'm, and I hope that, you know, chances are, if you're watching this, you're, you're like a total fan of mine. I hope that you don't think the titles of the videos that I'm making are too clickbait because I had like a fear to use titles like this. It's they're kind of like, they, they make me cringe a little bit, but at the same time, they just perform so much better. And the way that I see it in a wholesome way is like, if using titles like this, you know, the top seven ways to become an entrepreneur and how to full guide to making $10,000, you know, it seems, I don't know if like, it seems a, a bit clickbait to me, maybe it doesn't to you, but even if it does, like, I just realized, well, like if more people are watching these videos, you're literally just giving the people what they want. So, you know, as a good entrepreneur would, it's not about what you think, it's about what like the target market thinks. If more people are watching videos where the title is something like this, it makes sense. And I think that, you know, usually these top seven ways videos, which are like 10 minutes long, usually they're kind of shit because it's just like, oh, number one, meditation, meditations when you do this. Number two, good sleep, good sleep. You know, they're, they're so short that you don't actually learn anything. I hope that with my format of the long unedited videos, when I do it like a clickbait video, which is like the top nine ways to make money and stuff, it's kind of still valuable because each, each point is like 10 minutes long. And so it's like, it's kind of like 10 mini videos where I'm literally just spilling like the knowledge that I have, the wisdom that I have, so that hopefully it helps you. I hope that you understand that because I, I prefer making videos just like how to make money, you know, just like simple titles, but it's not about what I want. It's about what the guys I'm trying to help actually click on. And it's certainly 100% videos like this. So let's do Tim Ferriss's uh, fear setting exercise. This is the last actionable step and then we can end the video and I can rest my throat. So his exercise is very simple. You just get a piece of paper or a table in like a document and you split it into three rows and you want define, prevent and repair. Define, re define, prevent, repair. Define is what you write, what could go wrong. So when you think about the fear that you have, maybe you, you title the page. Um, the fear I have is for example, using Clickbait title, like clickbait titles like this, right? That's the the top fear headline. What could go wrong? What could go wrong is people could think that I'm clickbaiting. People could be slightly turned off by the titles that I'm using. The titles that I'm using might not get that many views. So you start to write down the things that could go wrong on that side. Then you go through the prevents one is okay. Well, how could I reduce the likelihood of that that like the definition stuff happening. Well, I could still make a really good life-changing video, even though the title is a bit kind of slightly immature for my taste, which also makes sense because, you know, I'm 25 years old. I'm 26 now, literally 26 today. And I've become, I've got to a level of like, you know, like entrepreneurship and success. I, I'm on track to make multiple millions this year. Most people, like, you know, most people aren't totally relating to that. So it's like, I sh probably shouldn't be making videos for me. I should be making videos for like my younger self. And he would have liked videos with this type of title, right? So you start to fill out the prevent box, like the lines there and you say, okay, well, how can I prevent the things that I've defined? Well, I could make sure the videos are still life-changing. I could make the videos way longer than normal, like one hour long, so that when I do make a video title like this, which is, you know, the nine ways of nine traits or something, that then there's still enough meat in the video to be valuable. And then you do the repair. If things do go wrong, what could I do to repair, to fix it? Well, if people hate these videos, then I could just go back to my like usual style. So you can do this right here, right now as an actionable step before the video ends. You could just pause this video and do this. You go define, prevent, repair at the top of the page. Just write the exact thing that you fear. So maybe for you, it could be, I fear making YouTube videos because I don't want my parents to watch the videos and hear me talk about these sensitive topics. Define what could go wrong. My parents end up finding the video and they tell me not to make them anymore. My parents find the video and they're really aggressive and, and upset. My friends find it and they end up sharing it around in school or in work or something and everyone's making fun of me. You start defining it. How could I prevent that? Well, I could make the videos and I could just talk about things that e I could imagine that even if my parents or, f or like high school friends saw that it wouldn't be cringe. So I'll just talk about like some of the tame things for now, like fitness. And you know, if, if my parents watch me with in a video where I'm literally just talking about like fitness, it's not 
so bad compared to me talking about like no fap or getting girls or something. Another prevent could be, well, I can make it on a totally fresh Google YouTube account so no one should be able to buy, you know, to just kind of see it automatically because it won't get many views. How could I repair it? If my parents do see the videos that I make and they don't really like them, I could just speak to them like an adult and just tell them like, this is the business that I want to get into. I could also just apologize. Worst case scenario, I could just private those videos and just move on with my life. So it's not like it's irreparable damage. If you do this exercise, pretty much every time you feel that you fear something, it will do wonders for you. Now, it's the end of like the entrepreneurship thing, but I just want to give you a quick lesson on masculinity. This is the fastest way for you to discover your deepest purpose in life, which is literally 10 out of 10 important. The only, like, like literally the important thing of your life, the only thing that matters is your purpose because the rest of your life goes a lot, like, must be aligned to the purpose, including your family, your friends, your relationship, your diet, everything. So the most important thing in your life is like your purpose, your, your soul's reason for being on this earth. I'm not totally spiritual, but I am seeing the truth to arguments like that, where we talk about like your soul's reason for being, I didn't even know like soul was a real thing, but I'm starting to like understand it slightly. So what I will tell you is the pursuit of becoming an entrepreneur will make you a lot more masculine because you'll start to learn how to overcome your fear because in entrepreneurship, there's a lot of fear to get to the next level. And naturally over time, you'll begin to get used to like overcoming your fear. I genuinely, you know, if I heard this lesson four years ago, I genuinely would have made so much faster progress. I'm actually very proud of this video of the knowledge I've gave you here, because if younger Hamza, younger me watched this entire video and really, you know, like watched it with focus, it genuinely would have like speeded up his entrepreneurship journey by like literally months or even a year straight, especially this last point on courage and fear setting, it would probably do you well to literally just rewind and just watch that entire section, trait five and actionable step again, like right now, honestly, if, I, if I'm saying that to you and also quite frankly, like, you know, I'm pretty sure like I'll make more ad sense or whatever it is, but like, I actually really do think this last point is the most important because it's fear that could genuinely stop you for months from making progress. It's probably fear that's stopping you from making a lot of progress right here, right now. It was fear, like think about it. It was fear that kept me making like 20K a month in my business, which is really good, but it was fear that kept me there. And suddenly when that fear was just penetrated, I started to make five to 10 times that so fear can hold you back to such a huge level. That's the end of the video. I, I well and truly hope that it's really helps you. Because when I think about helping young entrepreneurs, especially this is a bit maybe unfair or whatever, but when I think about like brown skinned Pakistani, 18, 19, 20 year old wanting to be an entrepreneur, it just, it reminds me of me. There's a guy inside of Adonis school called Zane who I've just made a mod uh, moderator. And he reminds me of like my younger self. He's like a young Pakistani guy who's, who's trying to be an entrepreneur and everything. And I just, I just think this journey is, is so beautiful. I journaled yesterday saying like, I'm actually so proud that this is what I've evolved to. At first I started my YouTube channel with it just being about dopamine detoxing. Then I went into like the whole mental health and I still think that's really important, you know, mental health stuff. But I've got to the point now where this feels like the thing that I can really help young men with. I do, I will still make videos on like testosterone and fertility, but those things are almost like outside of my scope. It's probably better if we listen to like researchers and stuff and I'll still make videos about them because of what the researchers say and the, the books say, I can distill it down for us in a way that we can understand. But entre entrepreneurship and like making money online is something that I really have dedicated a few years of my life to. It's a problem that I've kind of solved in my own life. And I see how valuable and popular this topic is of how many young guys there are out there who would rather be entrepreneurs than like normal employees. And I think that I can really like help the guys. And so I genuinely feel very proud of this video and also the work that we've done in general. Hopefully you've got to this point, you're an entrepreneur and you respect entrepreneurship. So you won't mind me just kind of pitching Adonis School to you. If you don't want to hear about Adonis School, you can click away. But like Adonis School really is the place for you. If you've watched all this video, it is like this private online community and also this platform that's completely separate. It's not a Discord server or anything like that. We're literally like 
the, the sole purpose we have with me and my entire team is literally just help like this young entrepreneur, like this one entrepreneur, like this wannabe one entrepreneur to start making money, but also to become so effective that he, he's actually good at working. So we literally have like a sleep coach who when you join his live calls, he'll ask you a bunch of questions. Suddenly like your sleep becomes like 10% better and you know the impact that would have on your business. Suddenly like you're more productive, you're more focused, you're healthy, your brain's better, you're making better decisions. We have a purpose coach that helps you kind of find some life direction. We have an affiliate marketing teacher who does live calls and also sets homework. So if you want to get into affiliate marketing, which is a fantastic business model for like young people who have got like no real skills at the moment, because you don't need to make your own content. You don't need to be a YouTuber. You don't need to, um, you know, be, be on camera or anything as an affiliate marketer. You just sell like Amazon's products. Like for example, I'm an affiliate for a couple of people which you can scroll down in the description and just see like for a couple of sites that I like. And they'll make like an, an okay passive amount per month. It's like easily I'm making thousands, like above 5K a month from like the few affiliates that I have just passively. Obviously it's like I'm at a big level where I get a lot of traffic and stuff. But if you made, you know, a few hundred dollars a month from affiliate marketing, like somewhat passively, you'd probably like kind of enjoy that, wouldn't you? And then I do my own live lessons where I teach how to grow on YouTube, which when you think about it, how valuable is that? You you could learn from a guy with 2 million subscribers. And so I, I genuinely think Adonis School is like fantastic for young entrepreneurs. It's like such a beautiful community. It's just these guys who are coming together to one, use self-improvement to become better entrepreneurs and then two to actually discuss the specific business models and get better on those and um we're seeing some good results there's guys in there who have made the first like one thousand dollars already there's a guy who's made 2.5k from affiliate marketing already there's people who have already gained hundreds of subscribers on new youtube channels so it's um it's really powerful you can get to Adonis School. I've removed the links from the description now because I've set up like a new funnel. But if you haven't already, you can go and get that free like ebook, the free ebook signs you up to the like, email marketing thing. So you've put your email in there, get the ebook, the entrepreneur one, it's the top link in the description. Then about 24 hours after that, you'll get an email where I mention Adonis School. So that's where you can find the link from now on. I don't have it in the description because I think that this might be like a better funnel. I'll test this out and maybe I'll like update you just in case you're interested to make your own funnel and stuff. That's the end of the video. I hope you can appreciate it because my throat really hurts. If you have watched this far and you really appreciate this and you like, you want to thank me for the help, the, the greatest thing you can do is click on the share button underneath this video, get the link and just send this to like as many group chats or, or friends that you can, especially friends, you know, who are trying to become entrepreneurs and you could tell them that you watch the entire thing and you could tell them to maybe watch the entire thing. If you shared the video and we can just see like who has got the most people to watch it, that would be sick. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.